चुका हूँ और मेरे बैल और पले हुए पशु मारे गए हैं और सब कुछ तैयार है ब्याह के भोज में आओ परंतु वे उपेक्षा करके चल दिए कोई अपने खेत को कोई अपने व्यापार को औरों ने जो बच रहे थे उसके दासों को पकड़कर उनका अनादर किया और मार डाला राजा ने क्रोध किया और अपनी सेना भेजकर उन हत्यारों को नाश किया और उनके नगर को फूक दिया तब उसने अपने दासों से कहा विवाह का भोज तो तैयार है परंतु न्योता हारी योग्य नहीं ठहरे इसलिए चौराहों में जाओ और जितने लोग तुम्हें मिले सबको विवाह के भोज में बुला लाओ सो उन दासों ने सड़कों पर जाकर क्या बुरे क्या भले जितने मिले सबको इकट्ठे कर इकट्ठा किया और ब्याह का घर जीवन जीवनहारों से भर गया जब राजा जीवनहारों को देखने को भीतर आया तो उसने वहां एक मनुष्य को देखा जो ब्याह का वस्त्र नहीं पहने था उसने उससे पूछा हे मित्र तू विवाह का वस्त्र पहने बिना यहाँ क्यों आ गया उसका मुंह बंद हो गया तब राजा ने सेवकों से कहा इसके हाथ पाव बांध कर उसे बाहर अंधियारे में डाल दो वहां रोना और दांत पीसना होगा क्योंकि बुलाए हुए तो बहुत बहुत परंतु चुने हुए थोड़े हैं ओके सो व्हाट वी विल बी डूइंग इज वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग इट टुगेदर दोस हु आर हियर विल आल्सो पार्टिसिपेट दोस हु आर एट होम आल्सो यू कैन गिव एन आंसर ओके सो फर्स्ट वी आर लुकिंग एट समथिंग व्हिच आर लॉर्ड टॉट एज अ पैराबल ओके and uh, like brother pt work is has told many times parables are incidents true to uh, true to life stories okay that illustrate some spiritual truth okay so uh, in this particular passage the lord is telling a parable a true to life story which is illustrating a spiritual truth okay so there are some principles for interpreting a parable i'll just give a brief in the beginning because as we go through these bible studies we will also learn how to study the bible together okay uh, and how to study the bible individually so that you know at home you can also study very well okay one of the things that uh, there are about seven or eight points that i will be making when you study a parable okay uh, we have already said that it is a story which brings out a spiritual truth so there is a comparison being made between the spiritual truth and some prominent elements in the story okay so we must identify that that is the key okay otherwise we will miss the point okay uh, the key comparison is always mentioned in the passage okay it is not that you know some clear parables may it is mentioned some may it is not mentioned it is always mentioned what is that key comparison what is uh, to be understood from the parable is mentioned in that okay then the second thing we need to understand or keep in mind is what is the context in which the parable was told okay we have the parable of the good samaritan some he asked a question no who is my neighbor and the lord told the story of the good samaritan okay so that is the context uh, a crowd a person asking who is my neighbor and the lord giving a story the story illustrating who is my neighbor so the key comparison and the context okay in our passage also we will come little later on to what is the context what is the key comparison. study parables you can use those uh, principles okay the third thing that you have to keep in mind is who is the audience who is hearing the uh, parable as it is uttered by the lord jesus okay now there are two audiences which you remember okay one audience is the audience which was standing there when they heard that parable okay they are the primary a background which we have already seen you know a context in which it was happening opposition to jesus as ministry a question that a person context in which a question was asked okay now the disciples whether it was 
uh, crowd, whether it was the Pharisees and uh, the chief priests and uh, elders uh, who are opposing him, who was the primary audience? That is the third thing. Okay. Secondary audience is also there. We are the secondary audience. As we read the from the Bible, we are also hearing the parable from the Lord. Okay. So we are the secondary audience. The message has something for us there when the Lord uttered it. Okay. It will apply. for us to read will apply in some way or the other to us in the context that we are living. Okay. So we must have lessons and we must understand it and we must always apply what we hear. Okay. This is the third thing. Then the fourth thing you must know or you must parables always or mostly occur in the Gospel. So, our other gospel writer also referring to this parable. What is the context in which they are quoting? Okay, what is the emphasis that they are giving? Because each gospel writer wrote to a different audience, different emphasis. Okay, so we need to ask whether there is parallel passages which talk about the same parable. The fifth point is. We must identify the lead character because invariably the lessons will be connected to that lead character. Okay, the good Samaritan. The parable of the tenants. The tenants were the important thing. Okay, and what their actions were, how they treated the owners, servants, the landowner, servants and so on and so forth. Okay, and what uh, the landowner did to the tenant. Picture. So, who was the key character in that parable? That is the question that, fifth question that we need to ask. Okay. The sixth is actually a warning. Don't over allegorize. Don't split hair. Okay. It is basically an illustration. Every single small point in the parable or in the illustration is not supposed to be extrapolated into something. Okay. Don't split it. The key points need to be, uh, the key thoughts need to be compared, understood and applied in our life. Okay. What is given in the illustration or in the parable may be something that will make the parable more uh, understandable, hearable and give, uh, you know, shock value or humor or whatever it may be, okay? But we are not supposed to look for hidden meanings because the Lord was telling in plain terms. That is why right at the beginning, he will tell what he is comparing that uh, parable for, okay? Seventh point that you must, which can actually be the first point actually, is that we need to pray, asking God to give us an understanding of the parable so that we can apply it properly. Okay, so seven points, note and remember its setting or its background in which it was uttered. The central point of comparison, who was the primary and secondary audience? Are there parallel passages? Identify the lead character. Don't over allegorize and pray. Okay, without prayer, there is nothing spiritual that can be understood. Okay, otherwise it will be just like a textbook which is read and which we forget after some time, okay? So, now looking at our parable which we are studying, Matthew chapter 22, can we just tell what are the primary comparisons that are there? Can you hear me, by the way? Those who are online? Yes, brother, loud and clear. Okay, okay. if there is a disturbance, please tell. Yes, brother. Okay, so in our current passage, Matthew chapter 22, verse 1 to 14, what is the context? What is the background? Any idea? Background can't say Milega.
loudly. Yeah, those who are in my house will have to speak loudly so that the mic picks up. Those who sure. are online will have to unmute and talk. Okay. From the or previous chapter. online also. Yeah, somebody was saying. From the previous chapter, we can get the context. From the previous chapter, we can get the context. Okay, so we can turn to the previous chapter. Okay, chapter 21, verse 23, you can see. Can someone read it? Verse 21. It can be someone online also. Huh? Or someone here. I hope I don't have to ask someone to read. Okay. So Jesus was in the temple. Okay. And there he was preaching and teaching. And who are the people who came while he was teaching? Pradhan Yajiko or Yogoke Purani. Okay. Okay. So Jesus was in the temple, he was teaching, and the chief priests and elders of the people, that means the community leader, the religious leader of the people, they came. And they were asking. They asked two things. One is, by what authority you are doing this? And who gave you this authority? Okay, so they were confronting Jesus as he was teaching in the temple. They were confronting Jesus. So, are they friends or enemies of Jesus? Enemies. Enemies of Jesus. Okay, obviously... Because they are asking by what authority you are doing. The Lord on the way to the temple had cursed the fig tree and the fig tree had withered immediately. Okay. And news must have also reached by then because the disciples were surprised. The crowd which was walking with him was surprised. And uh, so the elders of the people and Pharisees were asked, chief priests were asking the question by what authority you are doing and who gave you this authority? Did our Lord answer? He didn't answer directly. He asked another question. John's baptism, John's baptism, whether it was from heaven or whether it was from earth, he asked the question. When they said, we, can't, we won't answer, Jesus said, I also will not answer. Then he said two more parables. Okay, Both were related to the Pharisees, chief priests and those who were opposing. One was the parable of two sons. One went to uh, he asked the to the the father told the first son go and work in the vineyard. He said he won't. After some time, his heart changed and he went and worked. The second one, when he asked, he said I'll go, but he did not go. And the Lord asked who was obedient, and the people answered correctly that the one who said no and then went and did, he is the one who was right. Then he told the parable of the tenants. Okay. Again, indicating how the tenants, that is the chief priests, the Pharisees, uh, the elders of the people, how they, as the tenants appointed by God to take care of God's vineyard, had usurped authority and they uh, were actually uh, working contrary to the expectations of the owner of the vineyard, that is God himself, okay? And they were unfruitful. Okay, so the tenants and, uh, yeah, you can just close the door. Yeah, the tenants representing uh, representing the chief priests and others, they were not doing the work of the Lord and a day would come when they will be removed and their work which was given to them, you know, managing the vineyard would be given to someone else who will be fruitful in the vineyard. Okay, in other words, Whatever was given to them as a privilege, as a responsibility, as something to be done, okay, 
as honorable service to the owner of the vineyard would now be removed, snatched from them and given to someone else. Then they themselves should be destroyed. That was the second parable that he said. And our passage starts with Jesus spoke to them again in parables. Okay. But so a plural is used. Okay, you can see parables is used. Again, he spoke in parables, but only one parable is spoken. And the incident ends. Okay. In other words, Jesus would have uttered a series of parables. They are not recorded for us in the Bible. But he spoke some more parables which are not there in the Bible. When we study the Bible, we must always look at every word because it is important. And uh, there is no by mistake or plural nay okay. Okay. Okay, so now I had given you the seven points that you need to keep in mind. Okay, so what is the context we have seen? What was the second thing? The key comparison. Huh? What is that in this passage? The kingdom of God. What is it compared with? Loudly. A feast by a king. Yeah. King who was giving a banquet for his son's wedding. Okay. All of us will have to speak loudly. Yeah? <laughs> Otherwise, it will not be heard. So, a king and a banquet that he is giving is compared. The kingdom of God is compared with that. Okay. So, the comparison is for primarily what the kingdom of God is like. And when you understand that and the story, the story is a king giving a banquet for his son's wedding. Okay, that is the story. That is the illustration. The parable which is teaching spiritual truth about the kingdom of God. Okay, that is the second thing that we said we should see. Okay. Who was the audience? We have seen. Who was the audience? The chief priest, the elders of the people and there was also a crowd which was there listening to him. Okay. And are there parallel passages? There is a similar passage in Luke 14, but it is not the same. Okay, if you read it, the context will be totally different. The place where the parable is uttered and the conclusions are also very different. Though there is a similarity, it is not the same. So this is an isolated quoting of a parable. Okay, so our Lord used similar parables in different contexts for different purposes. Okay. But here it is a totally different perspective. Though there is a similar passage, there is no overlap. Okay. Then the fifth thing we had to do was we had to identify the key characters. So who are the key characters in this passage? My throat is going dry, so I keep drinking water so you'll have to bear with that. The king, the invited people, and the reject uh, those who rejected it, and then the beggars from the street, those who came later okay, on. The, the invited people, then the second group of people who are invited, the people on the street, and uh, you said slaves or servants of the king. Anyone? Yeah. yeah. King's son. Okay. The, he is one of the key characters huh? because it's his wedding. Okay, he is, the hero. he is the hero in this passage. Actually, the father is doing everything for his son. Okay, and uh, it is not his uh, honor, but his son's honor also, which is at stake in this passage. So, the principles we have seen, and we have seen how those principles can be applied. Now, we will go into the uh, the parable itself. Okay. Now, what do we uh, now look at this passage? What are some things that uh, Jesus uses as an illustration? Okay, to describe the king and his son. First, the king and his son. Okay. In all the parables that our Lord said, okay, or uttered or taught, he used vivid imagery. You know, which something connected with the people's mind immediately. Okay, they could understand it. 
their imagination would have run wild okay and they would have been able to uh, you know visualize it so when you read this parable also if you read it nicely you know uh, slowly carefully you will be able to visualize yourself in that time either as the servant or as uh, one of the recipients of the invitation or the king or being present in that place and being able to witness all those festivities that were connected with it okay so the king what is, what is known about the king king ke bare mein kya maloom padta hai apne ko he wanted everyone to join him okay but now we are only looking at the story okay not the comparison first the story we will try to understand see now we won't interpret at this point of time okay first we will see the story we will make sure we are not missed any of the details okay so the king ke bare mein kya maloom hai here he was saying something the king wanted everyone to join him and to come to him okay he wanted everyone to join for, for the celebration of his son's wedding okay so first time he gave invitation to a small group only so we must notice that that he gave to a small group of invitees who had been invited to the ah they had been invited to the wedding so initially the man on the street was not caught okay later on they were caught then anything else Who is the king so anyway? What do we talk about king? Huh? He was so eager to call them that he sent sent his servants to uh, bring them. Okay, he deployed his servants to go and call the people personally. Okay, they had already been invited. Then he started called them personally also. Okay, so he was someone who was eager to see the people coming to his son's wedding. Then. राजा लोगों के बारे में क्या मालूम है अपने को वॉट डू वी नो अबाउट द किंग एनी किंग ऑफकोर्स वी डोंट हैव किंग्स इन इंडिया बट एंग्री किंग या वॉट इज दैट एंग्री ही वॉज एंग्री या ही गॉट एंग्री या हिज इमोशन आर ऑल्सो मैं किंग गॉट एंग्री सो देर वॉज अ रिएक्शन दैट ही वॉज making and it was obvious okay and uh, i am going to saying something you have to say loudly huh? they have to hear you so king is a powerful leader and they invite someone obviously they need to summon that person okay they have to be there they have to be they there not reject uh, king authority people should not they reject king authority okay kingdom ka meaning kya hai Uh, where does the word kingdom come? A king has a domain. Domain बोला तो क्या है? आपका domain password रहता है ना office में? Okay, that means those who are employed in your company, they are part of that domain of your company. इसके लिए वो domain password and domain access से you will go into the network which gives you access to whatever the company is having and everyone can access it in who are in that domain. Okay. and they can share information with each other okay so in a kingdom what is there a king is there and his domain or sphere of authority is there every person who is in that domain is part of the authority under the authority of the king okay and like elagoan said people who are in the kingdom have to submit to that authority the king has a say okay he says final okay and when he invites logically people should have gone for the wedding okay if your boss invites you for his son's wedding no option you will go and a boss is not a king okay he is also an employee but in a kingdom the king has absolute power it's a monarchy it's a sovereignty means he is sovereign he has the absolute rule over the people under him okay in our offices we will not refuse but here in the story 
the people belonging to this king think that they have an option think that they have an option to obey or not obey look at their pleasures look at their conveniences somebody had another work to do field mein gaya koi dhanda karne ke liye gaya okay everyone who was part of that first invitation did something some were doing nothing because they got time to beat the servants also no they were doing nothing so they beat humiliated abused and did other thing but they all collectively decided that they will not submit okay they decided not to obey okay that is how the king responded to them that is why the king responded with as sister bindu said with anger his emotion was anger because they should have respected his invitation they should have come but they did not come okay anything else we know the king has prepared the royal feast okay he had already prepared the royal feast remember this also he has already prepared the feast people coming people not coming will not stop the feast from taking place okay when you compare this kingdom of god, what is happening in the kingdom of god remember all these key things that you are seeing now will come in the message in the lessons to learn at the end okay the feast will go on the feast is a predetermined thing the sun is getting married the feast will be spread the cattle will be slaughtered and there will be guests and there will be a celebration okay the things in the king's mind will not change the crowd that enjoyed those privileges may change because some were invited but they thought that they were having the choice jana hai to jayega nahi jana hai to nahi jayega okay that was their perspective their problem but the king and his feast and the wedding will take place okay remember that so in eternity also we will be making some comparison okay now just from our own personal experiences no i know half not even halfway through we are <laughs> already uh, into the study anyway why do we invite people to a wedding you know suppose there is a wedding in your home each one of us got married also why do we invite someone for a wedding kisko bulata hai to be part of the wedding and enjoy the peace and it is a privilege to be with the king and this okay it's a privilege somebody has called you you are part of them okay they are close to you they are friends so you want to go okay they feel you are part of their family life and they call you okay anything else hum log bhi shaadi ko jata hai na shaadi mein jata hai to kyon jata hai hum log कोई इनविटेशन दिया तो जाता है क्या हम लोग भी वो इनवाइटिस जैसा है घर में ही बैठ के कार्ड लेके घर में रख देता है व्हाट्सएप मैसेज मैसेज डालता है गुड मील ओके अच्छा खाना मुफ्त में मिलता है ओके ठीक है गेट टू ईट गुड फूड देन यू गेट टू यू गेट टू मीट लॉट ऑफ पीपल नो पीपल यू आर नॉट मेट लॉन्ग बैक ओके इफ माई फ्रेंड्स son is getting married from college okay then all my old college friends i'll meet so we it's a time when you get to meet people so you are happy with that then what else is there there is a story to tell it, no? is, a, it is a social declaration to uh, for people to witness that my son has been married okay it's a social witness in which a lot of people come to know that my son is married Okay, good. But why do we go for a wedding? 
इफ यू आर इनवाइटेड और कुछ रीजन है रिमेम्बरिंग वर्ल्ड स्टोरी एंड इवन एवरी वन विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द वेडिंग स्पेशली इफ इट इज वेरी ग्रैंड ओके buffet food lot of food being prepared there so many things will be happening musicians will be there people stress nowadays they have drama kids and even uh, puppet shows and many things going on yes yeah. yes well uh, the jewelry the dress the bride is wearing bride's family is wearing everything we want to see and we enjoy it okay though we may think it is carnal uh, to speak about such things but that is the reality in our heart many times we go more than wishing the uh, couple uh, uh, about their marriage because after they get married we don't think two times about them okay uh, but we go so that we can see all this tamasha okay normally people don't resist or refuse an invitation now think about it why did these people not go to the wedding Why? What would have happened? Because normally, a छोटा शादी रहेगा तो भी we like to see all these things, no? Socializing, all these things will be there. ये बड़ा इसमें तो who's who of the city also would have been there. Big big people would have been there, okay? And grandest food would have been there. Everything would be the best. Then now why didn't they go? They have not valued the invitation and they think that uh, their uh, normal priority is more than what. Uh, The king's invitation. They ignored it. Because okay. They are thinking they are busy, and this is important than now. Uh, important the king's son's wedding. Okay. They are busy, and they think it is more important. Okay, than the son's wedding, the king's son's wedding. Okay. In our life. we take decisions constantly okay we may tell you know my mistita when somebody was sick i was not able to visit i was not able to make a phone call because i was very busy but remember it is all about what we in our heart consider as priority okay if we think a man who is sick or a man who needs help or a man or a child or a woman needs by intervention and i think it is priority then i will find the time to do it i will adjust my things and do it okay but if i don't consider okay so indirectly it speaks about what they thought about their king okay so if you don't have time to study the bible the word of god if you don't have time to share the gospel if you don't have time to be with those who are sick and needy okay uh, then it is a question on what is a priority in your life okay how many invitations were there How many invitations were given for this wedding? Two. There are two or more. Okay, yeah, right. And for the others, one. So total four invitations. Okay, there is an invitation which had gone out at the beginning because when he sends the servant first. in verse 3 he sends them to those who have already been invited so they had received an invitation first then the servants go and invite them then they make all the bahanas and they refuse to come then the king says already the food is made ready please come okay that is the third invitation to those people and this time they are rude to the servants some of them get beaten up and some of them even get killed okay so three invitations to the first group one invitation to the second group what was the king's conclusion about the first group of people and which verse talks about it huh verse 
not it okay how is it that everyone else had garments for the wedding just think about it bahut bar hamara relatives mein shaadi hota hai ya kuch to na people give garments no for the people to wear the relatives to wear and come so that it looks nice okay here also because the king standard of clothes common people would not have had so definitely the king would have provided garments for the people to wear so that they can come especially because these were not the original invitees original invitees had got invitation long back उनको टाइम रहेगा उनका कुछ तैयारी करने के लिए इनको तो टाइम ही नहीं था रास्ते से पकड़ के ओके सो द किंग वुड हैव प्रोवाइडेड गारमेंट्स फॉर देम टू वेयर एंड कम इनटू द वेडिंग मेनी मेड टाइम फॉर गेटिंग देमसेल्फ्स रेडी एंड कमिंग बट वन मैन थॉट चलता है आई विल गो एज इट इज यू नो एंड ही फेस द कंसीक्वेंसेस ऑफ इट नाउ लुक एट द सर्वेंट्स what you can learn about servants in this passage the king servant unke bare mein kya seekh sakta hai loudly yes huh? the mic should pick you up complete obedience to the king complete obedience to the king the servant showed that how do you know what what you can tell some of the minor points because they will compare with us okay this is we have a responsibility given by god to tell the gospel to others and do some things on this earth we are servants of god in a sense now my person it says slaves son yeah slaves so first time they do second time even though the invite is there and willing to come but when he says go on the invite them they go they will say no they are unwilling why should He go on in the evening. Okay. Not giving a. So they are not giving a reason, even though the king said a second time they go. Then some uh, were already mistreated and uh, beaten, but even then, uh, boldly they are going and yeah. they are getting killed. So the servants had only the kingdom priority in their mind. Keep that in mind. Okay. The king had told that they have to go and tell. He told where they should go. first time he told them to go to the invitees no whom they should meet he told second time he said go to the street where they should go he told okay where they should go whom they should go and meet what they should tell <laughs> okay and what should be the outcome he told he told our god is very good no he doesn't tell randomly he told that the hall should be full okay outcome was he told and the servants were faithful to the king they didn't ask questions they did what they were told they went where they were told to go okay they spoke what they were supposed to speak okay and even though there was opposition they persisted kisi ko maar khana hai to kafi der udhar baith ke baat charcha kiya rahega na just ja ke bola to koi chaku leke marega nahi You understand, no? They must have been so forceful, so insisting, so uh, uh, bent on in making those people come that compelling that those people got irritated. They abused them, they beat them, and they killed them. But even if they lost their life, they didn't run away from their responsibility when they went to the place where they had to minister. Okay. Anything else about the servants? उन्होंने किसी में भी भेदभाव नहीं किया कोई बुरे या भले वो भलाई और बुराई नहीं देखी सबको मैसेज दिया और सबको गुड न्यूज देकर अपने साथ लेकर गए and they did exactly that it is specifically mentioned good and bad because they obeyed the king's command to the last letter they called okay 
They missed one man who came without garments. Okay, that was a problem. But did the king told them? He doesn't talk. He confronts the man only why he had come without the garments. Okay. What was the outcome for the man who came without the wedding garment? First group which didn't obey, they were destroyed. Okay, now second group, this group may say one person. What was the outcome for it? He was, there are other things in the before that. Tied it, find it. They tied him hand and foot. Why they uh, should have tied him? They to walk in the Subara Jagat, the bar picking at the office at Jaga. So tied him. Okay. He was like the people in the first group. He thought he had a choice. He thought he had a freedom. Okay. Now his freedom was being finished. He was tied and thrown out. Abhi kuch nahi kar sakta hai. Okay. He also thought no, he had a choice. How is his choice? Gone. And where he was thrown? Into the outer darkness. Now, a so brightly lit, and uh, normally shadis that we know of also mostly take place in the evening to the night. Okay, and that place is lit, and outside it is darkness. Okay. In the story, in the outer darkness, there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why? Right? You know, I'm just telling from a story point of view because we may start comparing it with hell and other things. We can do that when we have the time to do it. But the first group of invitees, what was what happened to them? They had been killed, and their city was set on fire, no, destroyed. Okay, so this man is put with that same group of people. Who are now suffering, who are in pain, who are in tears, who are, whose freedom had gone. Okay, now they, they might regret, you know, I should have gone. I should have listened. You know, Raja to itna powerful tha. I dared to resist him, but now it was too late. Okay, so the story ends that way. You know? uh, that way. Now you compare it with, so what will be the the comparison for us. What does it speak of? What are key comparisons that you can make when you think of the kingdom of God and the king and his son's wedding? What are some key thoughts of Okay. People were able to reject the offer or invitation of the king. Okay, it was, the king was gracious, he invited everyone ultimately. Okay, so in two batches, but everyone got invited. As the servants of God, we should neither be reluctant nor sluggish uh, to call the people of God, to call people to God. Yeah, can you repeat, Ria? As servants of God, we should neither be reluctant nor be sluggish to call, the pe call people to God. Yeah. As servants of God, after God has sent us on a job, on a mission, okay, we should neither be lethargic, slow in doing what God wants us to do. We should be energetic about the things of God and we must take it very seriously. Okay? Kisko kisko beja hai parmeshwar ne unka seva ke liye? And kiske paas beja hum log ko? To everyone who believes in his name, uh, he has sent them to the world. Because. He has sent us to the world to invite them to join the feast. Okay. The Lord has set a time when the wedding feast of the Lamb will take place. Okay. In the book of Revelation, chapter 19, we are told about the wedding feast of the Lamb. Okay. That event in history will take place. And it is demarked time. People have had privileges. Some were born in Christian families, Jewish home, okay, children of good parents. Okay, they had the privilege. But many privileged people chose rather to reject God, isn't it? 
the invitation also went out to the unprivileged people who never knew him and it's going out through his servant we must be faithful in taking it to every single person okay neither lethargic and we should not dis get discouraged by their response to it also we should be persisting to fulfill what he wanted us to fulfill okay it's not a choice the subjects did not have a choice to attend the invitation was there so that they should attend the servants also had no choice they had to go and tell they had to ensure that they were there they were to ensure that the recipients of the invitation were prepared properly and brought to the wedding okay any other thoughts you have before we wind up the king is going to uh, the king is meticulously going to judge uh, our behavior and our approach so we should be fully prepared and ready for his kingdom okay the king is going to judge okay every group of people here were scrutinized the first group of people who were invited they were judged the servants we are not told they were judged but their actions were commendable okay and third the next group of invited people they were also screened and scrutinized and they were part of it okay any other thought anyone wants to add there's a lot of people online as well the king's order should be our uh, the king's order should be our utmost priority the king's the king's order should be our utmost priority uh -huh. should be our utmost priority you said yes sir yeah the king's order should be our utmost priority okay now i am reminded based on what ria is telling no uh, some of us there are uh, Alliance judges in Ahmedabad also. Okay, Bombay also it was there, and we were part of the alliance there in Bombay. Okay, one of the initial missionaries who started the movement. Okay, uh, Dr. A. B. Simpson. He had made this statement. It was a very powerful, strong missionary movement. Okay, uh, which reached out. The, their first missionaries actually of the movement came to India, to Gujarat and Maharashtra. Okay, this was a uh, statement. We need to make Christ's last command our first concern. What was Jesus' last command? The Great Commission. Go into the whole world and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, behold, I am with you always. Okay, his last command before uh, he uh, ascended to heaven was that. So, A. B. Simpson said that you know our first priority should be our Lord last command. Okay, the Moravian missionaries. Okay, those who want can. Uh, I have a CD which you can observe, or I will uh, send you video link in the Bible study group. Tom Zinzendorf started this movement. Okay, many people went as missionaries to Africa, to uh, uh, many different parts of the world. It was one of the biggest missionary movements. If you read in this book of world records. The longest prayer chain in the world, which lasted more than a year, okay, uh, was this Moravian missionaries, who, uh, their prayer chain. Okay, many of the missionaries sold themselves as slaves so that they could reach other slaves. How can you share the gospel with slaves by becoming slaves yourself? Okay. That was their logic. They went okay, and many slaves died. Many missionary slaves also died because they.
they lived in pathetically poor condition okay diseases lack of amenities and facilities hard labor they all underwent that so many missionaries or even missionaries who became slaves also died so when they died in the church they would announce that brother so and so who went as a missionary in so and so country in so and so state where he worked in this uh, uh, as a slave in this uh, field or whatever project that was going on is dead who will fill his shoe and other people offered and went that served there okay so we need to remember that we have been called to do the lord's work without questioning him because he is wise to know where we should go what we should say how we should say and to what extent we should suffer for it and his priority should be our priority if we have not received jesus christ as lord and savior in spite of the invitations coming to us because of our privilege of being born in a christian family of being part of a church that believes in the word of god and in the uh, death atoning vicarious death of the lord jesus christ and if still we have not responded to god's invitation then only a fearful judgment we can avoid okay so we need to carefully ask ourselves you know just going through the motions of reading the bible attending prayer meeting breaking bread and whatever else you know will not make us part of god's kingdom the transformation should have taken place on the inside third the invitation comes we need to respond but there has to be a change okay people changed into the wedding garments okay in isaiah we are told the garment of salvation will be provided by the lord if you read the book of zechariah there is a priest called joshua in chapter 3 okay and he is standing there and satan is standing next to him accusing him and the bible says okay there is zechariah in that vision and he sees joshua you can turn in the bible to that passage if you want okay joshua is in dirty garments okay then the lord takes the steps to change this garment and he is clothed with garments that are white okay that is filth or is filth because of sin his personal sin the reason why satan is accusing him is removed and he is given a new garment you can call that as that statement of isaiah you know the garment of salvation zechariah chapter 3 i am right about chapter 3 chapter 3 uncle chapter 3 verse 4 yeah okay so god takes the initiative to clothe joshua with clean garments so remove his dirty garments and clothe him okay then zechariah does something very important okay verse 5 then i said okay i is in first person this is zechariah speaking not god speaking okay then i said put a clean turban on his head in those days people wore turbans as a sign of their dignity okay god had cleansed him joshua was a priest was filthy god cleansed him god put his righteousness on him okay it is zechariah his fellow brother who restores his dignity and accepts him basis of the work that god had done in joshua's life okay for him okay so in other words many of us brothers and sisters will be tainted by sin horrible sins as well okay but christ death is sufficient satan is accusing joshua was being accused joshua was being accused in presence of zechariah humiliation would have been 
on his mind, on his thought of being utterly useless. Okay? But after God finished his work on Joshua's life, when he removed his film, put him in fine garments of linen, white clothes, then Zechariah accepted him. Okay? So also in God's kingdom, in the church of the living God, we need to be careful. Those whom God has restored, okay, we should not recollect and recall their past sins. If they are living and walking with the Lord now. Okay? So I would like to end uh, what I had to say with that. Brother Rakesh, you can just pray and